Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white flicker deck aiming to re-trigger all our various enter the battlefield abilities using our commander Felia Exuberant Shepherd. This 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary dog has flash so we can also play during the opponent's turn and whenever Felia attacks we get to exile up to one other target non-land permanent and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So we can also exile opposing permanents with it, especially useful to get rid of a blocker or or maybe to exile an opposing token, since tokens won't be coming back from exile, so it turns it into a nice removal effect. But for the most part, we're going to be flickering our own permanents to re-trigger powerful enter the battlefield abilities. And if a permanent returns under our control this way, we also get to place a plus one plus one counter on Felia, so it can slowly start growing, so it's easier to attack past opposing creatures turn after turn. Now I've split up the deck into a few different categories. By far the largest section are creatures or permanents we want to flicker with Felia to re-trigger their ETB effects. Then we also have a few ways to discount our spells or accelerate our mana. We have other flicker effects besides Felia in case our commander gets answered. We also have a few ways to double or enter the battlefield triggers which can be very fun. And then we've got a bit of interaction, a few removal spells and even some counter spells in white which also play well with our commander having flash. And then the miscellaneous section has a few ways to protect our commander. We've got some equipment we can search up with our Stoneforge Mystic and then some other finishers or taxation effects to make a life miserable for the opponent. And then if you take a look at our mana base we have mostly just basic planes since we also have Winter Moon in our deck which punishes non-basic lands so we're just running the full basic planes set up here to also leverage one of our removal spells lay down arms which gets better the more planes we have. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, we have a Mox Amber since we have a cheap commander, so it's usually worth it. Same with Arcane Signet, which is always worth running. Pearl Medallion discounting our white spells, and then Ocantra's Monument discounting white creature spells, making a 1-1 warrior token with vigilance every time we cast one. Doesn't trigger when creatures enter when we flicker them, but is still pretty good. Then taking a look at our other flicker effects, at one mana at instant speed there's Cloud Shift and Ephemerate, which is the better one of the two since it also has Rebound, so we get to cast it a second time. Then at three mana Guardian of Girapur, at four mana Restoration Angel, which also has Flash, and then Teleportation Circle can flicker a creature turn after turn, and then both Panharmonicon and Elish Norn can double our ETB effects, Elish Norn also shutting down opposing entered battlefield triggers. And then taking a look at the cards we actually want to flicker. At one mana we start out with Guide of Souls, which is maybe not the best target itself for Felia, but is excellent to have on the battlefield once we start flickering other creatures, as we not only gain life but also generate energy, which we can sink into the ability growing one of our creatures, giving it extra counters and flying, so that can also make it easier for Felia to keep attacking. And then we also have Soul Warden as another way to gain life when creatures enter, this one also triggering off opposing creatures, and both of these are also excellent alongside the Ocelot Pride, which can then start going wide and making cat tokens, which can then in turn gain us more life or give us more energy with the Guide of Souls. And as we'll see later, we have a few creatures that help us find one drops in the deck, so then it's not too difficult to assemble all these synergies. Then we have both Novice Inspector and Thraben Inspector making a clue token when they enter, which we can sacrifice to draw a card. Then there's the Archivist of Ogma at 2 mana, punishing the opponent for searching their library as we now get to gain a life and draw a card, so excellent against opposing fetch lands as well. And then the Loyal Warhound, another way to maybe fight the green ramp strategies as we now get to maybe search an extra planes when it enters to keep up. Spirited Companion simply draws when it enters. And then a Stoneforge Mystic is pretty exciting, helping us find one of our equipment and put it in hand. And then we can also maybe use the ability to cheat them in play, although there's no super expensive equipment in this deck, so we're mainly getting a one mana discount here. And then I'll quickly cover the equipment while we're here. Swiftfoot Boots for Hexproof and Haste can also maybe help get Felia back on the battlefield and attacking right away. And then we've got the two most powerful swords in my opinion, Fire and Ice, which can draw cards and deal damage and then a Forge and Frontier, especially the green protection is useful since green decks are quite popular, and then we can uh, potentially play extra lands and start casting spells out of exile. And then going back to our creatures, at 3 mana there's Blade Splicer making a 3-3 Golem. Those will also have First Strike as long as we control the Blade Splicer. Spellbinder can exile a card from the opponent's hand to make it more expensive. 
Got Inspiring Overseer to gain a life and draw card, similar to the Priest of Ancient Lore, which doesn't have flying. Then a Loran can blow up artifacts and enchantments, similar to the new Witch Enchanter, which can also be played as a land. And then we have a Recruiter of the Guard, which is one of the more exciting creatures to start flickering with Thalia, as we can search our library for any creature with toughness, two or less, and put it into our hand. And that covers a lot of creatures in our deck, even our copy of Solitude, which is an excellent removal spell that we can potentially play for free by pitching a white card from our hand and exile an opposing creature. Also very fun to start flickering with Thalia if we just cast it for five mana, as we can now keep exiling opposing creatures turn after turn. Then we have our Ranger Captain of Eos, which can find a 1-drop when it enters. Can also maybe sacrifice it to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells. And then we have the Ranger of Eos, the classic at 4 mana, which can find two 1-drops. So that's how we assemble all those Oswald Pride and Guide of Souls synergies. Then we have a bit more removal with Skyclave Apparition. Circuit Mender can also draw cards when it leaves the battlefield. And then we've got some uh, prototype creatures, Steel Seraph, which can upgrade into a 5-4 if we flicker it, and then also a way to give Felia flying to maybe attack past opposing blockers, and then Comet Thrasher drawing a card when it enters, and then turning into a 3-3 double strike if we can flicker it, once again drawing a card. And then back at 4 mana, there's the One Ring, which is the nerfed version here, so it does cost 1 mana to activate, but at least we can reset the burden counters with Felia if necessary. Then we've got Solemn to find an extra land when it enters, can draw a card when it dies. The Hoplite, counting our devotion to white to make that many soldier tokens to help us go wide. Thalia's Lancers is also pretty fun, finding a legendary card when it enters, so that also includes our One Ring or some of our legendary lands, and there's a few other legends throughout, like Elishnorn. And then a Sanctuary Warden as one of our curve toppers, making citizen tokens and drawing cards when it enters, and can then reset those shield counters potentially. Sun Titan getting back a permanent with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard, so it can get back Felia if it got answered. And finally Moonshaker Cavalry, one of the better finishers available as the white Crater Hoof Behemoth essentially. Then our removal includes a Lay Down Arms, another payoff for having lots of planes in our mana base. We've got Portable Hull, also good at exiling opposing tokens. And if we exile an opposing commander with it, and the opponent sends it back to the command zone, and now there's nothing underneath the Portable Hull, so we can maybe flicker it in the future with Felia to once again exile an opposing permanent. And the same can be said for Journey to Nowhere and also Vacation, which can hit more expensive creatures as well. And then we've got Swords to Plowshares as another Insta Speed removal spell. And then our two counter spells, Mana Tithe at 1 mana and Reprieve at 2 mana. And then our miscellaneous section has a few 1 drops that can protect Felia, Giver of Runes, Selfless Savior, and Skrelv. These we can also search up with our various Ranger of Eos effects. Then there's Esper Sentinel to tax the opponent. Curse of Silence often taxing the opponent's commander by 2 mana. And then a Winter Moon, a great way to punish greedy mana bases, and the reason why we have so many planes. And then a Thalia can also punish non-basic lands as they now enter tapped. Can also make it easier for Thalia to keep attacking when opposing creatures enter tapped. Then we've covered our equipment. And then Cathar's Crusade, another excellent finisher when creatures keep entering the battlefield, as we can now give our team extra plus one plus one counters. And then some of the non-basics I'm still running include Animal Sanctuary, as it can give extra counters to our commander. Good Mutavolt as a nice creature land. Nykthos, which counts our devotion to white to give us an extra mana boost. And then Iganjo, which we can also channel for additional removal, but still 36 planes. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Narset's and Lighten's Exile. So can expect a lot of interaction, removal, which is going to make it tough. Wintermoon could be effective. We've got a bit of ramp and then the red protection from sword could be nice. So, yeah, overall, I'll give it a try. Could use more creatures that we want to flicker, since Loran is going to run out of targets pretty quickly. And then, if I play Winter Moon, our opponent knows to fetch a basic. So I think we pass, and then next turn I can double spell Signet plus Winter Moon, perhaps. And then just go end of turn Felia. Could already play it now if we want to play around a counter spell. Although I imagine a deck with Narset is more likely to have removal than just counter spells. And there's another non basic. Alright, so if they tap out here, we're not too upset because then Winter Moon resolves. Opponent bounces, that's not too bad either. So let's go Signet 
into Wintermoon. Don't want to play my own non-basic until it's necessary. Although we can always untap one of them. So that'll slow the opponent down. And then we can maybe get a Blade Splicer going with Felia. Alright, now opponent does know to fetch for a basic land. Although we can curse naming Narset. So curse Narset. Or we can go Felia plus a 3-drop. Because yeah, they, I guess, would still be able to play Narset next turn. Since they get to untap Sacred Foundry, play another land. So maybe I should still play the curse just to be safe. Because once Narset comes down, it's going to wreak havoc on my board. And then it's the Enlightened Exile. And then just pass with Felia available, I guess. That opponent with a Fragment Reality on our Winter Moon now. That's too bad. So, in that case, do we play Felia now? I guess we'll wait if we hit some one drop that gains life, for instance. Better to play Felia afterwards. Opponent's gonna fetch. Could play Felia now, but then we also run into maybe a board wipe. So our opponent now able to get a non-basic. Asper Sentinel's not the worst one to get. But opponent's gonna get rid of it promptly. Fair enough. So play Felia. Can maybe equip it with a sword here so we don't trade for Skyclave Apparition. But then I don't have anything too exciting to flicker. Don't want to flicker the opponent's Skyclave Apparition, that's for sure. So yeah, if I play Blade Splicer, I can still cast a sword but not equip it. So I think sword equip is fine. And if they take it, I maybe get to find an extra land. And then, for now, I guess we could target Arcane Signet, for what it's worth. And maybe have an extra mana in the opponent's turn. Could also flicker the curse to name something else, but I'm still happy naming Narset. Opponent surveils once again. Filling the graveyard for Narset is also pretty good. At least we won't have too many spells ourselves that Narset can get back from the graveyard. And our opponent did jump, doesn't want us to connect with the sword. Now a wedding announcement is acceptable. Can still help them jump Felia, but looks like they have a different answer. The humiliation. That's annoying, so we now don't get to flicker stuff anymore. But we do have Loran to blow up the wedding announcements. So yeah, maybe step one, move the sword. Attack. Boon is going to jump. And then blow up the wedding announcements. The one ring for protection. So, if I play Elish Norn first, at least we get two Blade Splicer tokens next turn. Uh, Loran also cannot activate since I cannot target the opponent with a one ring out, that's pretty funny. And then there's also no point in attacking to enable the sword since our opponent's protected here and we're not gonna get to deal damage. Alright, so we'll just play Elish Norn then. And then I can activate Loran in the opponent's turn if I'd like. Hope they don't draw into a board wipe. Could have also considered moving the sword elsewhere. If we wanted to maybe protect another creature, Path to Exile, that works. So yeah, all the efficient answers out of the Narset deck as we expected. At least if they do play board wipe, we get our normal Felia back in the command zone. And a Fable. At least uh, red protection is useful there. So I don't mind both players drawing since we could use some more action. And a Sanctuary Warden's not bad. Can attack with everyone. 
opponent might trade for Loran, but then we get to trigger the sword at least. So do we want to draw again? I think now we're fine, since we have Sanctuary Warden for more card draw. And we're going to hit with the sword. Finding, ooh, Thalia's Lancers, that's exciting. So maybe play the Savior first. To then protect the Lancers. And then if I play my land, I can still tap Nykthos for mana. And then I could get my own One Ring. Ooh, Wash Away, ouch. Yeah, that's a nice answer to the Lancers here, since we cast it from Exile. So I don't get to get my own One Ring. I guess uh, Blade Splicer will have to do. And our opponent's also taking damage from their own One Ring. So they do need to find some answers. I don't want to put a card in my opponent's hand here, but uh, Farewell would be particularly devastating, since they can get rid of their own One Ring, and also get rid of my Sword. And then it also gets around Selfless Savior, making Indestructible. Alright, Pono lets us untap. Is this maybe, let's see, 7 mana could be Overloaded Cyclonic Rift. So we'll start by attacking. And could keep Selfless Savior back, but now nah, let's send in everyone. Yep. So I can make a mana here. Valia goes back to hand, but it still perpetually doesn't have any effect, so I can't flash it in. And now we have to get back on the board. Stoneforge would be nice to resolve. Get our other sword of fire and ice. So maybe I go Stoneforge. And then I don't have to play the sword yet. I guess Swiftfoot Boots would also be okay. But I'm kind of lacking fire and ice. And then can go Splicer, Signet, Felia, or we can just go Selfless Savior, Felia. Have the most creatures in play to then suit up next turn. Opponent's got the arena to give creatures haste as well, so they're maybe looking at Narset now. It's gonna be Flage instead. Pretty good too. They can likely uh, get it back out of the graveyard with haste to take out another creature. So that's gonna hurt. The golem is fine. And all the life gain here from Flage is incredibly relevant when they're taking damage from the One Ring. So we will need our swords to carry us to victory, I think. A hasty Sanctuary Warden also would have been nice, admittedly. The opponent using the Arena for a hasty Flage. Still have Selfless Savior we can put to use. Opponent wants to take out Blade Splicer. I think that's acceptable. If I can block with Felia, then... We can maybe get the normal version back. Our opponent goes for Savior, so now by sacrificing, at least I uh, deny the life gain. Protect the Stoneforge. And then I could still block with Felia just to get it back, but at this point I might prefer just having the extra attacker. So we have 8 mana, which means I can play 2 swords and equip one of them. Won't quite be able to equip both. Could also use Stoneforge to put an equipment in play, but it only saves us one mana. So yeah, I think for now just block like so. Get to untap, find a land. Alright, so step one might be Sword of Fire and Ice on Felia. Can attack past the Reflection and take it out, or we can go upstairs. Opponent's got one card left in hand. Alright, so we'll start by attacking, I think. Opponent can block. And we get to draw, find the Guardian of Girapur. Q 
Okay, so flickering Felia still doesn't remove the perpetual effect. I can go Arcane Signet into Guardian, Flicker Stoneforge, and then get to Haste for Sanctuary Warden next turn, perhaps. But Flage attacking again is somewhat of a problem. At least the arena is tapped, so they can give Narset haste next turn. Opponent drawing with a one ring, falls to five. So they're looking for more action. They know about boots, they don't know about Sanctuary Warden. And we have the mana to play Warden and give it haste. So that's potentially five more damage in the air. I'm just gonna take six, keep the extra attacker. So yeah, on the board our opponent would technically die to their own one ring. Now Prismatic Ending, answering my sword is unfortunate. They still have three cards in hand. And Flage is keeping them alive here, so doing a lot of work. We untap, but opponent undoubtedly has some interaction available, potentially some counter spells as well. Ranger Captain is a way to prevent him from casting non-creature spells. So... Let's say I play a Ranger Captain, then we can activate Nykthos for mana. Does that leave me enough to play Warden and give it haste? I doubt it. 8, 9, 10. Play Ranger. I guess I could play another 1-drop first for free before tapping Nykthos. I guess we'll maybe start there. And then what one drop makes sense. I'm not getting a life for Ocelot Pride. And we don't have any energy for a guide. So maybe get like an Inspector here. Or a Giver of Runes. Play Giver. And then now we could tap Nykthos for mana. But I'm one short of Warden Boots Equip. So maybe we save that for next turn. Can go sword, equip, and boots equip. And then if I sack ranger now, maybe that's worth it. Then I force the opponents to cast a removal if they have it before we decide what to equip. And opponent with fateful absence on Felia. At least it's back to the command zone now. And remove perpetual effects, please. All right, that resolves. So now equip Giver of Runes. Can equip it with a sword as well. Smash for four. Sadly gonna be one short of lethal with uh, one ring here. Unless they decide to fetch somehow. And these will go to waste. So our opponent is still in the game. And we had to use our Ranger Captain, so not quite what we were hoping for. But we're still setting up our Sanctuary Warden with haste potentially. Although now they have the Arena of Glory back to maybe give Narset haste and get back one of their removal spells. So the game goes on. I wonder if they're more scared of the boots or the sword at this point. Snapcaster, get back her removal spell. They might be able to get rid of both of my equipment here. Fragment Reality and Prismatic Ending. Used Ending with Snapcaster. And then Reality with Narset. So yeah, maybe I should have gone for Sanctuary Warden with Haste last turn. And just hope they didn't have any counter spells. So Fragment Reality, the sword, gives us Ocelot Pride with the city's blessing. And then now Sanctuary Warden is not going to have haste anymore once they get rid of the boots. Although I can then just attack with both of my creatures and then they might die to the One Ring. So maybe there's still hope. 
So yeah, opponent forced to exile the ocelots. And then I guess they're just hoping we can get there next turn. But we could also replay Felia and give it haste, so... Try Sanctuary Warden. And give it haste, and then we still have Ossification, and Giver of Runes could also protect at instant speed. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Dina, Soul Steeper, Black, Green, Life Gain. And yeah, our hand seems reasonable enough. Possible our opponent tries to assemble some sort of infinite combo with cards like Exquisite Blood. Vito is also quite powerful in that deck. For now, I can pass with Falia available. Opponent won't be able to attack with Eidolon unless they have instant speed removal. So if they do attack, we have to be a little careful. Now a Deep Cavern Bat. Gonna take something away. Probably the Recruiter, maybe the Ossification. Because if I can curve Falia into Recruiter, I could get two creatures right away. But opponent takes the removal spell, which also makes sense. And uh, I guess they forgot Falia has Flash. So I could keep up Cloud Shift. I think it's reasonable to just go Recruiter and then attack and flicker it and then get some powerful creatures here. And Solitude is pretty high upon the list of creatures to get initially. That's something we can play for free. And then probably get some cheap creature that we can play next turn alongside more stuff. Yeah, definitely have quite a few options here. Let's maybe get a Guide of Souls. Since we'll be playing lots of creatures, can get some energy. Maybe get an Ocelot Pride next. Alright, opponent with a Grim Tutor, so now we're interested in maybe disrupting the opponent's hand. Get cards like Elite Spellbinder. Prevent him from casting stuff. And then, for now, still probably fine with Guide of Souls. And then I could play Circuit Mender as well. And then, what else? Could still play the Soul Warden. And then keep up Cloud Shifts, plus Solitude. And then flick a recruiter. Could have also used Cloud Shift on the recruiter initially to immediately get a uh, card like Elite Spellbinder, which would have been fine. But uh, might be the pick now. Yeah, sure. And then we can still Solitude with Cloud Shift at instant speed to get rid of multiple creatures. So Dina's fine. And assemble the team opponent tutoring again. So we can remove both of the opponent's creatures end of turn here. And then still play Spellbinder plus maybe Flicker it. So that seems fine by me. So make sure to be in full control. Pitching Lancers. And get a bunch of triggers. And then Cloud Shifts. This way we exile Dina first, so our opponent doesn't uh, trigger Dina's ability an additional time. And our opponent explodes, get rid of both of their creatures, can keep flickering Solitude going forward, but we can also play Spellbinder to attack their hand directly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, Locus of All. It's a five-color value deck. Archivist should be good, get to start with a Guide of Souls. Yeah, sign me up. Would love to find some of our hate cards for non-basics, since our opponent's going to be running a lot of them. But for now, can hit for one, and then keep up Felia and Archivist, depending on what they do. 
Karyatid. All right, so Falia it is. And then we could flicker a companion to draw an extra card and keep up mana tithe. That's nice. So you can maybe counter Omnath if they go for it next turn. Cathar's Crusade is going to be an excellent finisher. And I wouldn't mind drawing an extra land. Alright, Moonshaker Cavalry, pretty far from a land. So we've got uh, two better finishers in our deck. And yeah, there's Omnath. Ooh, this feels good. And that's good enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We are up against Heliod, so an enchantment deck. And uh, yeah, we've got a very promising start with Guide of Souls plus Ocelot Pride. Kind of like we're playing Historic. So could go with either one first. Playing the guide will uh, give us more energy maybe going forward. Could also go with turn to Felia to start flickering our creatures and give us more Guide of Souls triggers. Kind of liking Arcane Signet into Ocelot. Could also now keep up Mana Tithe, so we have some options. But uh, let's develop our mana. End of turn, make a token, get an extra energy. And then next turn I can keep some of my instant speed plays available between Mana Tithe and Felia. Alright, Strict Proctor, that's pretty good against our deck. We have a lot of ETB effects we're hoping to abuse. So, yeah, now I'm wishing I kept up Mana Tithe. So, I just need more mana, I guess, to pay for it. But that also means uh, no Guide of Souls trigger unless I pay for it first. Although, maybe I just go Selfless Savior and then pay for Strict Proctor. Just so I can grow with Ocelot here when I attack. And then I could pay 3 life to keep a mana tithe. It's going to be a little suspicious. But seems worthwhile. And then I don't get the energy here, but I still got the token at least. He leaves punishment on the savior, that's fine. Sword doesn't have the right colors for the matchup. So now I could go Felia, pay for Proctor to get the Guide of Souls trigger, but then I'm tapped out of Mana Tithe, which is probably not worth it. So instead I'm just gonna play the sword and keep a Mana Tithe. And then Ocelot can keep attacking. I guess the guide could also attack, but they would just block it with the uh, Proctor. My opponent trumps, so I guess that implies that a Sweeper's incoming. At 4 mana, we have Mana Tithe, so that's fine. And then... Remove a Task Counter. So now we will get the energy end of turn. Or maybe your opponent had some sort of removal spell that wouldn't have worked with Strict Proctor out. Nope, never mind. Vanquish the Horde and... Oh no. Opponent gets enough of a discount to get around Mana Tithe because we went too wide with all the cat tokens. Disaster. Yeah, that's too bad and Selfless Savior doesn't work either. So that was pretty much the perfect answer. Alright, let's get back on the board with Blade Splicer. Mana Tithe is not looking too hot right now. Opponent can play Heliod and get one of their enchantments back. They must have Mana Tithe on their radar because of the untapped meadow we played earlier. Okay, so now they want us to equip and then maybe they'll plan to use a removal spell. I don't really have anything else going on so I may as well go for it anyway. And then equipping the token makes a little bit more sense since we might want to flicker Blade Splicer in the future. 
but it's also the best creature for them to remove right now. And go to attackers. Alright, we got to connect. And find two lanes we get to play, so that's awesome. And then Fally I can play at instant speed. Opponent had a memory deluge, so they still get to draw some cards here. Maybe set up another board wipe. Yeah, we had such an awesome start, but uh, don't always run into Vanquish the Horde. It's usually a Wrath of God. I guess Supreme Verdict, we wouldn't have been able to counter either. And Gideon of the Trials, we cannot counter, but we can exile with ossification. And a Rhystic Study could counter that. I don't think it bothers me enough. Even though Mana Tithe is quickly losing value. So I can put the sword on Felia. Flicker the Blade Splicer. There's no real need to play the Hoplite here. We have enough board presence as is. And then this prevents all damage, so that also includes Planeswalkers. Interestingly, I guess I could also flicker the opponent stuff here if we wanted to get rid of Rhystic Study temporarily. Ooh, Sword of Fire and Ice, that one's tempting to play. So, if I play the sword... I can pay the one for Rhystic Study, and then leave Gideon in play for an extra turn. Maybe that's still fine. Because now the sword times two makes any creature we suit up potentially lethal. Loran can blow up one of my swords. We'll see which one they pick, the one that's already equipped. Plus on Thalia, but we can still attack, and new Winter Moon looks decent, although we actually have a few non-basics ourselves. And then do we have Lethal here? If I suit up with a sword and uh, attack, we can even exile Loron to get rid of it temporarily, so I don't even have to use Ossification, and then we would have 11 exactly. Just need to make sure they don't have any interaction, but nope, opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a black red artifact deck with uh, Aaron Eater. Our hand is probably fine. Can flicker the Ranger Captain to get more one drops. Although now Recruiter's looking good too. And I'll play Giver over holding up Mana Tithe. It's going to be tricky to counter their commanders since it does have affinity, so it's going to all of a sudden become cheaper for them to deploy. So we can expect some cheap artifacts. Signet's a good start. Alright, so for now we can play Felia, but also keep a Mana Tithe. And then I'll keep up the Giver for protection in case they aim a removal spell at my commander. And then we've got Recruiter at the ready. Uh, something exciting to flicker. Smuggler Sculptor will resolve. Untap. Ocelot Pride could also be fun, but let's go for a Recruiter. And then I think step one is still get Solitude. It's kind of the default. Although I could also get some removal that deals with artifacts like Loron, which is pretty decent here. Let's get Solitude first and then attack and get Loron. And I'll keep up the Giver of Runes. Okay, so... Things are going well. Recruiter's pretty messed up with Felia, if you can get it going. Now, Batterfist would let them crew the Smuggler Sculptor, which I think I'm okay just exiling here. 
with Solitude before they get a chance to attack. And what do we pitch? Maybe a Mana Tithe at this point, since I might be tapping out in the near future. And that's good enough for the opponent to concede. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the energy deck, and we've got a decent hand. Stoneforge getting the various swords is going to be useful, especially Fire and Ice has two relevant protections. And then I imagine Winter Moon's going to be effective too against a three-color deck. Hoping they don't fetch a basic, but yeah, I imagine they get a Surveil Land end of turn. Not keeping the Raptor, surprising. Opponent keeps up two mana. Well, we can keep up Reprieve and Felia. Don't need to play Winter Moon into a counterspell necessarily. Right, opponent does nothing. Yeah, I think we still play Felia. It's not the end of the world if it gets countered. Opponent has the No More Lies. So now we can untap and go Stoneforge plus Giver or Winter Moon to start locking them down when they're already missing land drops. If it weren't for No More Lies exiling my card, I could have let Felia go to the graveyard to maybe eventually get back with Sun Titan, but that's a little risky. And yeah, Winter Moon making the opponent concede. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Samwise, a food deck. And uh, sure, this hand could work. Turn 1 Ocelots on the play especially is always welcome. And then Stoneforge can get our various swords. And the one with protection from green is going to be relevant in this matchup. Although even Fire and Ice dealing two damage to Samwise could be pretty nice. Bone's got the Pilgrim. We have to decide if we want to go for Felia or if we take a different approach here. Either way, Ocelot can attack. If I play Stoneforge, I can get a sword, and then next turn I can activate Stoneforge to save myself a mana, although I still won't be equipping it necessarily. If I play Felia, I can maybe flicker the Stoneforge, so that's a little bit more exciting, so we'll give that a try. Although we also have Cloud Shift as another flicker effect, so we'll be able to get all the equipment we need. Might struggle to hit our land drops at the moment, since I don't have any card draw. So there's Samwise, still one mana available for a Giver of Runes. Okay. So, still fine to attack with Felia. And then, I wouldn't be attacking with the uh, Ocelot Pride here, but that's okay. So play Stoneforge. And get our Forge and Frontier for starters. Attack with Felia. Flicker Stone Forge. Could also flicker the opponent's food token for what it's worth. Opponent happy to take the trade. Yeah, I think we're fine with the trade since we don't have many flicker synergies coming up. Could always cloud shift Felia, but that doesn't seem necessary. And then, instead of keeping up Cloud Shift, I'll just play the Sentinel here. And then do we want Fire and Ice or Boots? Let's get Fire and Ice. But as I started saying, Felia could also exile the opponent's tokens. So that's a way to get rid of their food. Now Mox Amber doesn't tap for mana, but opponents got their own Felia into a Steel Seeker. Okay. I don't have a sword giving protection from white, sadly. So now if I were to attack, opponent can block and then activate giver naming uh, white, for instance, and that way we don't really get to connect. Yeah, the giver of runes makes things a little trickier. So maybe I just build up my mana with a solemn. Uh, Felia could also maybe flicker solemn to give us more mana for next turn to set up our moonshaker. Yeah, I guess going for Felia this turn cycle is acceptable. And then we also keep up the Stoneforge's ability for what it's worth. 
But yeah, I could have potentially equipped a sword by using Stoneforge and then paying two to equip. But Giver of Runes would be able to block for free. Now a Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. Does our opponent pay the tax? They do. So it makes more food. Which can now also uh, tap for green. So they probably didn't want Felia in place, since otherwise we could just get rid of all their food. Opponent passes. Player commander. And a mana tithe could potentially come in handy. All their opponents got a lot of mana now with uh, Sweet's Revenge. So I think the plan is play Solemn. Can use Nykthos to have a spare mana. Attack with Felia to flicker Solemn. Then our opponent would block with their Felia and essentially eat it thanks to the Giver. So is there a way I can maybe get around that? Just Cloud Shift my own Felia, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's worth it just to build up my mana here. And I don't think Mana Tithe is going to be at its best with her opponents untapping with a Sweet's Revenge anyway. So, don't think it's worth it to attack anywhere else. Just flicker Solemn. Prefer getting an extra land myself over getting rid of the opponent's land. I'll let damage happen, but if they use Giver of Runes, I could Cloud Shift, but not let damage happen, that's fine. So we just trade it. And now I get to keep up Mana Tithe and Cloud Shift. So we could maybe flicker the Solemn again. Which gets us closer to Moonshaker Cavalry. So I'll put some stops here to make sure I Cloud Shift before it's too late. Statuary, that's fine. With the Knight of the Sweet's Revenge this is kind of redundant. Steelseeker does trigger. Milling a Florohedron. And there's Samwise again. So Samwise can now potentially sack three food to get a Historic card back, so that's maybe why they were okay trading for Felia. Yeah, I mean, if I Mana Tithe, they can just pay the one. So that happens. And then I'll flicker the Solemn. Could have also kept Cloud Shift to flicker the Cavalry itself, but that does require a lot of extra mana. Which we're trying to build towards in the first place. Okay, so is Moonshaker lethal here? I can just about cast it. I would have six creatures, so plus six, plus six, and flying. Yeah, I think that checks out. And that'll do it, the White Crater Hoof strikes again. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamiyo, Field Researcher. And uh, what do we think of our hand? Could use an extra land or two, but Recruiter is always powerful to flicker, and then Solomon can get our mana going. So we'll try it. And then we have a couple options on turn two. Can uh, keep up our mana, and then either Reprieve, sack a clue to draw, or play Felia. Ideally just draw our third lane so we can curve Felia into Recruiter, and there we go. And then against a Tamiyo deck, I could main face Felia to play around a counter spell. There are some cards that might punish me, cards like Witness Protection come to mind, but then we still have Ephemerate. So yeah, let's just main face Felia, since I don't expect to reprieve their 2-drop. And this way we play around an opposing counter spell. Now of course I could counter Recruiter of the Guard. But at least cards like uh, Wash Away or Tails End may not work. Okay, Botanical Brawler, so opponent actually going for the uh, plus one counter synergies. Still fine to trade Felia for Brawler if I get to flick a Recruiter. Plus, if I really wanted to, I could get Solitude to clear a path. So, is that what we want to do? Just Solitude and then um, clear the Brawler. Can ditch the Thraben Inspector. Yeah, that seems fine, actually. 
There's no way for me to time it so that I can flicker the solitude with Felia's ability. Not with the Evoke, at least. Of course, once we have it in play, that works fine. Flick Recruiter again. And now we have to think about what else we want to get. Maybe something that draws cards to hit our land drop. So, like, uh, an Inspiring Overseer could work. Archivist could be good against the opponents. Could also get Stoneforge going. Or maybe just a Companion as the cheapest card draw effect. And our opponent scoops it up already. Yeah, Recruiter is pretty brutal when you can get Solitude onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Sky Captain. So, modified deck. Our hand seems reasonable. If we can curve Felia into Thresher to draw, we're getting closer to our curve toppers here. If they have some disruption, this might work out poorly. But Sun Titan can always get back Felia if it gets removed. Just don't have the most explosive early game. And then are we more worried about counter spells or removal? I guess we'll just wait until end of turn. Hope they tap out for some creature we can attack into. Alright, Aspirant, so it's still going to be a 2-2. So that's fine. And then we can take the trade, but at least draw an extra card. Winter Moon's also looking quite spicy, but I think it's still Thresher for now. Take the trade if they want to, and I get to upgrade Thresher into the 3-3 Double Striker. And for now, back to the Command Zone, I think. Although, I could just curve Winter Moon into Crusade into Titan. So I may not have time to redeploy Felia, so actually let's keep it in the graveyard. It's a little risky. If they find an answer to Sun Titan. But now we can go Skrelf plus Winter Moon. Opponent sadly has a basic island, so that one they get to untap for free. Steel Seraph's not bad either. So step one might still be to attack, and then prioritize Winter Moon over Steel Seraph. Opponent just took six. Yeah, if they counter Winter Moon, it's not a disaster. That resolved. Could have also kept Skrelv as a way to trigger Crusade later, but good to get the protection in play. Opponent had an exclude, I see. Well, now they only get to untap one of their non basics, and yeah, opponent scoops it up, so I guess Winter Moon was effective. Alright, so we get to see our mono-white Felia deck in action. Some games lasting a very long time, other games being decided pretty early on, thanks to Recruiter getting Solitude, and Winter Moon also stole a few games, so definitely got to see the impact of the new Modern Horizons cards on the format. And in case you missed it, I recently did a sort of ranking of all the best cards in Brawl, so that video can also be worth a watch if you're interested. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.